Hello and welcome to this five-part video series on getting started with SpecFlow. My name is Bas Dijkstra. In this first video in the series, we're going to take a look at behavior-driven development, SpecFlow and the SpecFlow ecosystem. What is behavior-driven development or BDD in short anyway? It's an agile software development practice that encourages collaboration between the business, development and testing. Where in traditional software development practices, communication was often done through thick documents, BDD tries to straighten out the potential collaboration issues by facilitated discussion between business, development and testing, also known as the three amigos. Larger goal of BDD is to create a shared understanding of how the software should behave, aligning the business development and testers on the expected behavior of the system that's going to be developed. An important part of the entire BDD process is turning specifications into acceptance tests, which is where SpecFlow comes in. Now, before we move on and dive deeper into what SpecFlow can do for you and your software development, it's good to realize that just using SpecFlow does not equal you doing behavior-driven development. Behavior-driven development is much more than just using SpecFlow to turn your specifications into automated acceptance tests. Behavior-driven development starts with a product backlog item, a piece of functionality that a software development team wants to add to their product, to the product that they're developing. The first phase of the BDD process is the illustration phase, also sometimes referred to as the discovery phase. In this phase, the three amigos, the business, the developers and the testers create examples that describe the intended behavior of the feature that's going to be developed. Useful techniques to help them come up with and refine those examples are specification by example and example mapping. The goal of this phase is to create a shared understanding between all of the amigos about what it is exactly that the software is going to do and to ensure that everybody is talking about the same thing when they refer to specific domain constants and entities. The second phase in the BDD process is the formulation phase. This is where the examples that are created in the previous phase are turned into a more formalized language. And typically this is done using the Gherkin syntax, also known as the given when then syntax. The third phase in the BDD process is the automation phase. This is where we create automated acceptance tests, also known as executable specifications from the specifications that we created in. Because they describe the intended behavior of the feature or the system that we're building automatically also form living documentation. And the big benefit of using such a technique over regular documentation or specification in Word documents or any other form of documentation is that these are executable. So you get immediate feedback about whether or not the system that you build conforms to the specifications. And at least if you do it well, it is updated whenever the software that you're building changes. So this makes the specifications very closely tied to the actual software that's being built, which is a big benefit over separate documentation that's stored somewhere on a hard drive and which might or might not be updated at some point in time during the development. So the final phase of the BDD process is the validation phase. Even though a lot of the discussion and the specification has been done up front in the BDD process, you still need to perform some validation and see if the thing that's being built is actually valuable to the end user. And this is typically done in the validation phase. So where does SpecFlow fit in? SpecFlow is used in the automation phase unsurprisingly, probably. And this, and this figure also shows that just using SpecFlow is not equal to doing behavior-driven development. SpecFlow is a tool, and as we will see in the remainder of this video series, it's a powerful and very useful tool, but just using SpecFlow does not mean you are doing behavior-driven development. It is a tool that supports BDD, but it's entirely possible to practice BDD without using SpecFlow. 
it's also possible to use specflow without practicing BDD. So using one does not equal doing the other. What specflow does and what it does really well is creating executable specifications. So let's say we have a feature with one or more scenarios describing the intended behavior of the software that we're going to build. What specflow does is turn this into executable code. And because specflow is built for the .NET platform, this will be C-sharp code. This also means that just using specflow is not enough to create your automated acceptance test. Specflow typically is one of the components of an automated acceptance test solution. Typically the executable spec flow code is augmented by UI testing libraries such as Selenium for example, API testing libraries such as REST Sharp, and unit testing frameworks to create a fully functional automated acceptance test solution. Now spec flow can directly drive your unit testing framework classes and methods. But typically the unit testing framework itself is also used to collect and execute the spec flow scenarios. That's why the arrow between spec flow and the unit testing framework here is bidirectional. So the spec flow ecosystem uh, next to spec flow itself contains a number of other useful tools. For example, the spec flow runner, as I said just before, you can use a unit testing framework to collect and execute your spec flow features and scenarios. But you can also do this using the spec flow runner, which provides seamless integration with spec flow itself. Living doc is a spec flow add on to create even better living documentation. Spec map is also available. It's a user story mapping tool that can be used in the illustration or discovery phase of the behavior driven development process. And finally, there's also Specflow Plus Excel for Specflow versions up to 2.4, which provides integration between Microsoft Excel and Specflow. If you want to know more about Specflow itself or any of the other tools that make up the Specflow ecosystem, you can go to docs.specflow.org and read everything there is to know about any of these tools. Thank you for watching this first video in the Getting Started with Specflow video series. I hope to see you soon in the second video where we'll install and configure Specflow and get started creating our first executable specifications. If you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me and I hope to see you soon.